Right then, <laughs> another little vlog. This is uh, hopefully a bit more informational than anything else. So what you see here in this horrible, crusty mess is a CFCA engine. This is the 180 by turbo from the transporter vans. Absolute painful engine. We, um, we hate them when we tune them because they never make power. They never make standard power. If you're 150 horsepower standard, you're doing well. And then if your engine's not dead, for the reasons we'll talk about in a bit, you're doing even better. So I do own one of these in my car and add the rubbish that causes this problem not being deleted from minute it was brand new when the previous owner had it because we've always looked after that van. I'd have never bought a 180, I'd have just got a 140. But if you know what you're buying and you're pretty savvy, you'll not get caught out like quite a lot of customers do with this engine. But the transporter vans are good. You get all your crap in back. The only downside is people randomly wave at you who's got other vans. So that is one of the downsides. But anyway, so this is, the reason this is here, we bought a van. It's a, a Caravelle um, executive. I don't know if that means anything to anybody else, but it's a fancy van. The engine was dead. We bought it knowing that it was dead and we've put another engine in it. But we've never actually stripped one down and had a good look at what the problem actually is. We know what causes it because there's a fix, but we don't know what causes it. So I'm gonna have to get my hands dirty and then we're gonna have to take these gloves off because I don't wanna to touch the clean bit. But anyway, this is the culprit, but this is basically the oil filter housing, EGR cool uh, arrangement. So basically that bolts onto the block there and just before I forget about it, as an aside, this is the inlet manifold. And that fits kind of like that, and it's unique to the uh, transporter engines. But if you look here, this one's got an hole in it, it's all mangy and everything. And that's because people that don't know how to service these, grab them with pliers, snap all this off, and then next time somebody does it and punches an hole in it. And that's like a 250 quid inlet manifold. So if you've got oil all over there, you've probably got an hole in that. So. This EGR cooler, as you can see, this one's full of crap. And if you look at the part number, that's the dodgy part of the 512D one. So, I should have checked my part numbers before I did the filming before, but I was learning as I was going along because I didn't even know which part number this had got. But basically, this part number with a D at the end is the latest revision. So this is a genuine one. Obviously, the aftermarket ones that we've put on there, they're not got a Volkswagen number on, they've just got a Peerberg number. So if we can, we'll stick all the numbers that are bad up now and all the numbers that are good now. I'm gonna not try and say them all because I keep getting them wrong apparently. So if you've got any of the bad numbers, the first job to do, compression test. If that comes back good, change the EGR cooler because what basically happens is all the crap from inside here, the exhaust gases go in that side and then they come out and back into the inlet manifold, all pipe work and everything. I think it goes in there. In fact, I'm getting mistaken here. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. We've not got pipe work on. It, the exhaust gases come through the head from the uh, EGR port, they come through here and then <coughs> it feeds into here feeds back out into the inlet manifold. But you've also got coolant flowing around inside here. So what happens is this breaks down inside, the coolant gets inside there and you end up basically with aluminium oxide and obviously the coolant, which is not good for uh, lubrication. You end up with all that crap getting fed back into the inlet manifold and then that damages the engine. So you start having white smoke hard starting and that's because you've got low compression. So we get quite a lot of these in. The DSG ones sometimes will stall when you're setting off. If you've still got all the DPF and you don't get the smoking issues, but then people think it's a DPF problem or the DPF starts to block, 
they delete the DPF and they've got loads of white smoke and misfire and stuff. So there's a lot of symptoms and it's all caused by this. So there is a fix if you catch it early, which is this, which is a part that we sell on the website, which there'll be a link to it. But this is a new number. It's not a genuine one from Volkswagen, but it's much cheaper. It's made by Peerberg, which make the original one anyway, which these should be free to everybody if uh, they create a part that can kill an engine like this. But that's the price we pay for having uh, super efficient engines that are low on CO2 and all this rubbish to save the polar bears. But what we are going to do is pull this apart and just have a look at what damage it actually causes because obviously we can see that it's just manky going in but what is the result of all that crap getting in the cylinder so I get Paul's ridiculous buzz gun and oh, it scares me this I don't even pull trigger I don't even pull trigger full but we'll get it whipped off and we'll have a look <laughs> that so one thing to note about this engine it's totally unique to the bi turbo I can't remember if uh, if it's the same on the like in the Amarok and stuff like that they got this engine but the block and the head are different so you can't just put like a golf engine in and away you go there's a few considerations to be had if that's what you want to do but anyway let's get this whipped off there we go so I'll try and set this down. I ain't gonna make an absolute mess. Yeah, there's some horrible looking stuff there, but that looks like it's fell down from head gasket more than anything. And this one, I can't remember exact compression. I think a couple of glow plugs were stuck, but one of them had got like 80. 80 PSI when it should be more like 400. So, something not right, but the balls don't look. I'll get, get a torch and uh, wind it over. So the balls don't look as terrible as we'd be expecting them to look. A bit pitted, like a bit rusty. We'll see if any of these ones look any worse. Yeah, they just look rusty. Only slightly. It's really smooth, which is uh, not usual. So if we have a look here, quickly. If you can see it as good from. You probably can't see it. You can't see it on these blocks, but these ones are not as smooth and they've definitely got that rust. Paul, see what you reckon here? Looks horrible. Yeah, it don't look, there's no cross hatching, is there, like you'd expect to see? Just give me the top. Yeah, mine's rubbish. Pistons have got some horrible carbon deposits on them. They're not normally like that either. So all this crap must be getting... Yeah, your torch is better than this one. This looks really shiny, doesn't it? But yeah. rusty. Same time. I think I think is that that stuff. That's bits of aluminium, that isn't it? Yeah. But it's not from the. That from cooler. Yeah, yeah. That's not from the piston itself. Like you'd, if you piston had melted here, yeah. you'd expect to see that, wouldn't you? But that's like the aluminium oxide we're talking about from. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it, it looks like carbon there, but that's just covered in oil, isn't it? But it's, yeah, yeah. It's aluminium. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all, so all that's like sand in it, really. Yeah. <clears throat> you that put pistons out and it'll be, rings will be gone. See, oh, it's all like pitted and... Yeah. Horrible. It's just literally all the, it'll just be like fine sandpaper just yeah, sanding yeah. that away, wouldn't it? So then you've not got the oil in. Yeah. Once you haven't got oil in, then pistons are just going to, piston rings are just going to start going, but we'll pop this, uh, we'll pop this piston out. I don't need that big silly buzz gun anymore. No. That's scary that far. Yeah, they look alright. 
Well, uh, come round this way, it might be better looking round here. There we go. As bad as you'd expect it to look. It's still got Teflon coating on. As you can see, they look like they've been uh, polished up, so I can only assume yeah, they're not as bad as I thought they were going to look. We'll get Paul's opinion again, he's seen more of these good and bad engines than I have. Didn't feel like it got a lot of tension behind it. Yeah, you can feel oh. it, it's really sharp. Yeah, so that should be, that should be not, they're not rounded, they're but not, they're not, no. they're not like a, that's not razor sharp. I felt worse when they've had no oil in them. Yeah. But it's just, yeah. Yeah, it's lost a bit of, so it's just literally that ceiling behind, from ring to bar. Yeah. Rob, so we hadn't measured this, so if we measured it, I imagine that bar will be too big as well. Yeah, slightly. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, that's the end of us taking engines to bits while we're filming, because it's a bit annoying trying to figure it out. But it's, uh, the idea with this then, we're going to rebuild this engine, and then we'll probably offer it as an exchange, if people want to drive in and drive out, or we'll uh, exchange just send you an engine and then you send us your dead one back and then we can fix it, hopefully. But this is just another aside to the madness that we've got going on at minute. So anyway, hopefully that were interesting. We could go a bit deeper if we wanted to, but we'll leave it at that for now. So cheers. <laughs>